Thank you for joining us again on Walking Through the Word. We will continue our study through the book of John. And today we're going to be in John chapter 15, verse 1 through 11. So if you have your Bibles, open them with me as we walk through the Word together. Last time we left off with Jesus giving words of encouragement to his disciples. He had just told them that he was going somewhere and they could not follow him. He told them that one of them was going to betray him and Peter was going to deny him. And pretty soon we're going to see all of them abandon him. So he continues his words of encouragement to his disciples by saying this in verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. What does it mean for Jesus to be the true vine? Well, what he means is that we cannot produce good fruit without him. See, for a fruit to be able to grow, the vine must produce the nourishment, the water, and all of its source of nutrients so that it can grow. Without the vine, a fruit cannot grow. And so what Jesus is saying is, we cannot produce good fruit without Him. We cannot produce any fruit without Him. He is our nourishment. He is what supplements our faith. We have no ability on our own to produce fruits that are in keeping with our salvation. And when, apart from Jesus, we are nothing. But he also says that his father is the vine dresser. What does that mean? Well, in verse 2, he explains it. He says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. What does it mean for a branch that is in him that does not bear fruit, he takes away? Well, there are many people that claim to be in Jesus. They can make claims all their life. They, they can be religious. They can even claim Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But if they do not bear fruit, then they not bearing fruit is evidence of Jesus not being their vine. And so they do not produce fruit. And so those that do not produce fruit are taken away by the vine dresser, that is the father. For the father prunes and he takes away the bad fruit. He takes away the bad vines. And he goes on to say, And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So those of us that are truly in Jesus, those of us that are truly born again, who are being supplemented by Jesus, the vine, then he prunes us. He works with us. He clips the bad portions of our branch he takes away the bad fruit of our branch but he continues to keep us so that we can bear more fruit he does this carefully he does it skillfully he does this tenderly because he knows that as long as we are in jesus we will continue to produce good fruit verse three already you are clean because of the word that i have spoken to you Abide in me, and I in you. So the reason that Jesus is our vine is because he is abiding in us. And the word that he has spoken to us is what is making us clean. He makes us clean, and then he comes and he abides, and he abides in us. He continues to say, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. And this is true. You cannot produce fruit by yourself. You need Jesus. And without Jesus, you are fruitless. You are unable to produce any kind of good fruit. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So you can make claims all your life about loving Jesus and about being with Jesus and about doing the work of Jesus. But if you never produce any kind of fruit that is in keeping with repentance, that is evidence of your salvation, then you have nothing. You do not have Jesus. 
and Jesus is not in you. You can make claims about being in Jesus all you want. But that does not mean that Jesus is in you. And this is the consequence of those that do not abide in Jesus. Verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. And this is the consequence of all those who do not put their hope, faith, and trust in Jesus. Because Jesus is the payment of sin. Jesus is the one who has removed the wrath of God from those who believe in Him. And when we do not abide in Jesus, the wrath of God remains on us. And so when we die, we stand before the great judge of the universe. And if we have not repented and believed in Jesus, then we will bear the penalty of everlasting hell. Verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And if you pay attention, you must understand the context. That doesn't mean you can ask for everything in the whole world and that's what you're going to receive. No. If Jesus abides in you and his words abide in you, ask whatever you wish because by Jesus abiding in you and by his word abiding in you, you will learn to pray in accordance to the will of the Father. You will pray in accordance to the will of Jesus because your mind and your heart will be formed according to his will. If he truly abides in you and his word truly abides in you, when you pray, you will not pray selfishly. You will pray according to his will. And therefore, we can have assurance that when, when we ask Him, it will be done for us. Because we will learn to pray, not my will, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse 8. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. It's an amazing thing. When we, the disciples of Jesus, begin to bear fruit, that is glorifying the Father. We don't simply bear fruit just for ourselves. Rather, we do it so that the Father can be glorified on all the earth. Verse 9, it says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. That is amazing to know. That just as the Father tenderly, tenderly, compassionately, perfectly loves Jesus, that is how Jesus has loved us. Us, those who abide in his love, those who abide in him. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, again, I've mentioned this in my previous studies. We don't keep the commandments of Jesus so that it can result in abiding in his love. Rather, we keep the commandments because we are abiding in His love. We do not work to earn God's love. We do not work to learn to earn the love of Jesus. Jesus already loves His people. He already loved His sheep enough to die for the sheep. And therefore, when we learn to abide in Him and He in us, we then begin to produce fruits And these fruits look like keeping his commandments. And when we keep his commandments, then that is evidence of us abiding in his love. And just as Jesus kept his father's commandments and he abides in his love, so we also keep Jesus' commandments and we abide in his love. Verse 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Again, these words are words of encouragement. They are saddened. They are disheartened because of the words of Jesus in the previous chapters. And Jesus is saying, the reason I'm telling you these things, brothers and sisters, is so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy 
may be full. So be encouraged. Those of us who are listening, who may be discouraged right now at this moment, be encouraged knowing that Jesus loves you. He loves you immutably so, perfectly so. And he has given us these words so that our joy may be full in him. So thank you for listening. May the Lord richly bless you and keep you always in his loving embrace. Until next time on Walking Through the Word.